Hey guys, it's the Xbox Nut, and first thing you notice is that I'm on the default texture pack. Um, that's because I was just after 1.5, uh, the uh, redstone looks. I don't know if you remember some of my other videos where the redstone looked like big squares. Well, it happened again, but now they're pink, and it's really stupid and it's annoying because you can't tell which is on and which is off. So I'm on the default texture pack. And you're probably thinking, oh my god, what has he done? Oh my god, we have no idea where he is. Well, I'm still in my world. That's my... Uh, this is my ALU. And I will explain what I've done here. Uh, I've actually built something for once with the ALU, not just planning and making random things that don't make any significance, have any significance whatsoever. So this is the control room, or it will be when it's finished. I've got a ALU slash CPU... Uh, kind of selector for the opcode. Uh, these aren't in stone, I've just, you know, they're not definitely what's happening because I haven't made the ALU. Um, you can probably see from the title, but what I've done so far is the code loader. I've successfully been able to load four bytes of code, um, two bytes of opcodes and two bytes of values, so that if you want to add five, for example, I don't know what add will be, uh, one, so you add, and then you have to put the value in here. You can't just, you can't have no value because you've got to add something. So that's how that works. And these are the two instruction, two control bits that I've completed. You can store code, and you can reset the code line. So what we have behind here, this is a three-bit counter. Um, thanks to X from the Minecraft forums. Uh, the input here and the clock reset thing here. Looks a bit messy because I was doing some testing over there. I'll get to that in a second. This is the uh, five-bit. Sorry, what am I talking about? This is a three-bit decoder with five en uh, outputs. I'm not using uh, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, no, I'm not using five, six, seven, eight. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, five, six, seven. Sorry. So I'm not using them. And. Right, I'll get straight down to the point. What this does, let's say you want to load your code, you reset the code line, and so now you can see, oh, it's not actually connected, is it? <laughs> reset it from here. You can see the it starts at zero. Now, it doesn't matter about that, because it's not connecting anything. Uh, before I keep going, I want to tell you about the problem I had. I was using a two-bit counter, and I was using zero as the first register. That doesn't work, because when it's on, it it stays on and you have to be able to load the code when it goes from off to on and if it's on straight away it means it will screw everything up so that is what I spent most of my time on trying to realize I was an idiot and I realized it about 10 minutes ago and I did this no I realized about an hour ago did all this in about 20 minutes and now it all works after it not working for about a day and me almost giving up on it but I don't like to give up on things so you reset your code when you program your code, you'll use a combination of these and these and values. And so, blah, 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 we're going to add 5, as I said. What you'll do, you'll store the current code line. Now, if we come up here quickly, you can see there's this delay circuit, which I found on the, f which was given to me on the forums when I posted the question. Um, oh, I can't remember the man's name, but... Uh, he gave it to me on the 20th of April, you probably know who you are if you're watching, if not, then I guess it's not that important. But he gave me this, uh, the monostable circuit, I'm sure many of you know it. Input goes in, turns off the torch, and turns on the output torch, and the output is reverted back to zero when these delays are, uh, when they reach the torch. So it turns it on for a number of seconds and turns off. What this means, if we follow this, oh... And this is the... Oh, I'll, I'll have to explain that in a second. Basically, that input from the decoder comes down here. It goes through here, and it goes through a various various circuits. It goes into a clock for a D flip-flop, which is here. And it also goes into an enabler, which is here. This is very confusing, I know, but each pair... For the one for the clock, for the deep, uh, deep flip flop, and one for the enabler, is this stone on the right and the dirt on the left. Not these two, but these two. So it clocks it, and the one above for the instruction, 
and it enables it at the same time but before it's got a four tick delay here and only a two tick delay here I think I don't know and it enables it at the same time the enablers go up through three wide AND gates uh, I use them because one of the main uh, one of the best bits of advice you can give to someone making a CPU is don't compact things you can compact circuits which is what I've done I've done really small D flip flops and such but don't compact the actual things because once you run out of space which you inevitably will after I've gone through many problems on this it will bite you in the arse another good advantage of these is that you can easily stack or invert powers up it's got a nice it me it's got a nice uh, distance between them just enough so that you can put the input all the way up without any unnecessary repeaters so they it's the same state basically so when this is off and this is on here so is that up there and the clock same difference it just goes up into the D flip flops and so as I was saying when the input to the decoder is turned on so let's say register 1 has been enabled after you've put in your code you press the button the decoder comes on it goes through here it enables and clocks the D flip flop at the same time it's very clever uh, it enables it slightly before clocks it de disables it because the mono stable circuit has uh, been reverted back to off and by that time it's stored the data so as you can see here we have our five it's red it's red this way because the it's going to feed into the ALU but we have a where uh, what is it it's zero one zero one isn't it so zero there one zero one and we also have our one which is over here and so once you loaded it it stays in there until you want to run blah, blah, blah. it stays in there until you want to run your CPU now I said I'd go over here afterwards didn't I this is where the 4 bit instruction the uh, instruction input goes up here onto my favorite bus of all time when it just runs lines and goes and bridges over like I've done on my uh, ALU so the numbers bridge over into their uh, correct binary order because I have OCD and it looks a lot better you don't want to say to people oh I accidentally reversed it all so do it all backwards because that's probably annoying so it reverses it yes I know these look like cocks but we'll just have to deal with that so uh, they get enabled just the same as bottom through these three wide AND gates and same as bottom again they go through these uh, D flip flops which I will root down into the decoders and everything will be amazing and this goes on for quite a while because there are four sets and they're each about 16 long. Okay, next line of code. Let's do something. I'm just going to make it up. Um, all on and three on. I don't know. So again, when it's stored, decoder switches to number two. Mono stable circuit goes. One is reset. Two is on for a bit. In that time, the CPU has clocked and enabled the code to go through, and it, then it disables it, so it cannot be changed, and it's been stored. Then we'll turn them all on, and then we'll turn them all off. You have to wait a second so that you don't change it while it's enabled. You have to wait till it's been disabled. In fact, let's leave one on on each. So we should have the 5 and the 1 from the beginning. This is all from memory, so if I muck it up, it's my fault. Then it's all on for the instruction and uh, 1101 for the value. So there's that 4. And then here, that's the 4 for the instruction. If you can see, ignoring that 1 just above my redstone in my hand. But those 4 are on. And then this is the 0 from the uh, value. Then we go on to this 4 when they're all on. And then we go on to the last four, I'll cut off from the screen, where only that one at the bottom and one at the top is on. So I have now successfully been able to load code. Uh, the next thing I'll be aiming to do in my CPU... Ah, CPU! Wow, that was really gay. Uh, in, <laughs> in the CPU is going to be code running, I think. Which basically means when you press a button on the CPU saying run, which is over there, it will take all of these values and one by one it will feed them into the ALU and it then it will run 
once the accumulator has an output it will come back take the next value do the instruction and so on so a very big part of the CPU has been accomplished and I'll give you uh, some perspective on how big this is this is just this is just loading code and it's four bits it's four bytes of code in four bit sections so I'm loving the new update by the way uh, my frame rates has been a lot better now so you can see in comparison to my ALU which is gonna have to be in although I'm gonna I'm gonna add more uh, options and stuff so it goes from here these are all the registers there's the control room there's the 4-bit uh, output oh the the other 4-bit is actually not used at the moment I don't know why I had it in there but I'll probably get rid of it and give myself some more space for the run CPU button and the other decoders and such that is some mono stable research I was doing with a friend Tommy's T-O-M-Y-S from the forums he helped me with that and these other ones initially when I was having trouble uh, wondering what to do in fact you might not be able to see wondering what to do for the mono stable circuit on the uh, on the bus right there I was testing out so many different ideas I had no idea what to do and I was just going I was being retarded and it turns out the most the simple was the way to go so yeah thank you for watching stay tuned for seeing more videos on the CPU uh, and soon oh, the idea for this CPU is uh, it's going to be 4 bit ALU with a 4 byte RAM address, uh, 4 bytes of RAM. It's going to be a simple CPU, so you can all play around with it. You don't have to think, oh my god, what is he talking about with all this rubbish in the control room? Mine is going to be a simple one, so we can all use it. We can all have fun because we're all nerds, yay. Um, and so it will load 4 4 bits, 4 byte programs, so 4 1 byte programs. Uh, bits of code, half of the byte being the register, uh, the, the instruction, sorry, and half of it being value, and you will run them in uh, in a sequence. So when you've loaded them all up, you press the button, and it will give you an output on all of those four instructions in a row. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and see you next time.